Okay, welcome. This is part three, celebrating Reverend Ambrose, 40 years in ministry. This is day 40 with me, Reverend Simon Mwangi. Last time we talked about part two, uh, the previous decade. Now we're in this last decade, mm. 2010 to 2020. Please share with us any memorable moments, any highlights as you have seen him lead the church. What was happening between this season? I know this is the season that I came in. I see. As a, as a, as a coordinator. Yes, yes. In fact, you interviewed me <laughs> in 2011. I remember, yeah. But any, anything you want to share with us? Um, we stepped into the decade now, 2010, up to date with the Reverend Ambrose uh, leading us. And the gates of time opened for us. Yes. And as we got into this particular season, now we are a larger uh, congregation. congregation and with a great people resource. If there's any diverse. gift that we can celebrate and very diverse. Yeah. Now that skill of managing these people resource and um, allowing their gifts to come out and serve the church is one skill Reverend Ambrose has mm. that I don't find in many, many places. Because uh, many leaders fight tend to want to stop and you know it yes whatever skill or energy seems to be coming <laughs> up yeah but the beauty of Reverend Ambos is that he will allow it and stand by it and even encourage it mm. and that's why now 2010 to 2020 we see increase of growth and expansion we start seeing the gate churches yeah Eastgate, Eastgate for 2010. example yeah and now, of course, we have Northgate, and at the moment we are thinking about Southgate, and the surveys have, have been done uh, for that. We also um, see um, the fivefold ministry. When Reverend Ambrose went to um, the U.S. Yes. And uh, from Saddleback uh, Ministry. Yes, Papa's Driven Church. Papa's Driven Church, and came back and then shared with us the need for us to organize ourselves. In that, when we saw uh, it was good, then we were able to put up the five. Uh, departments. departments, namely member care. Member of course, I'll start with member, yeah, member care. care. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I was. Maturity, maturity, uh, missions, missions, magnification, magnification, ministry identification, ministry identification, and leadership development. And we say this is a great strategy. We will have five departments and three people groups, mm. namely the youth, youth, children, children, and adults, and adults. And that's how we are right now. Mm. So we come through this particular decade organized in that way. And that really was very instrumental in overseeing the growth. That's the thing. That and that's leadership. From hundreds to thousands. Yes, that's all leadership. All of a sudden. Yeah, if that didn't happen, I don't think we'd have carried all this big congregation mm. through this last decade until now. Mm. And so through that, and then the gate churches, gate churches meaning we decided and determined we will set up churches at every gate mm. into the city. Mm. So East Gate, Mombasa, Ukochini, East Gate. Yeah. Ingini Akwenda, North Mbaka, Ethiopia, North Gate. North Gate. South Gate, Mbaka, South Africa, we call it South Gate. And it's a way of setting up churches within the city mm. and increasing our growth and also our influence. So our growth is not just in Westlands, it's also happening in satellite, uh, satellite stations. The, the other thing, of course, was um, Vision 2040. And that we, together with Revival Week, yes, yes, we saw in this time the need for us to keep congregating once a year in one large plenary as a large family. 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. You see how people come in. Yeah. Aisha picture can be shown how people would <laughs> arrive, you know, for amazing. Pastor, let me stop there yes. and ask you a personal question. You have passed up, together with Pastor Ambrose, a congregation at Ojejo, 200, 400, 400, 400. Now 10,000, and you have not grown a big head, you and him. <laughs> I know there's a big temptation for yes. many pastors who are watching when their congregation shifts like that. Let, let me put it there you have asked a question. It's actually discipleship. And uh, remember the words of Jesus that we need to be servants. The greatest is a servant. And even he himself came not to be served, but to serve, but to serve and, and give his life as a ransom for many. So our eyes are on service, not positions. Regardless of the number. Yes. Regardless of the size of the or church. Or personal benefit. It's just on serving people, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. And we keep our eyes there. The temptations have been there. And they probably, I don't know that you found seasons where some people, and Pastor Ambrose would say more, say, 
We want you to be bishop. <laughs> I need to be deputy bishop. <laughs> the rest of us shall hang around there. <laughs> or the issue of we want to put up chairs that are very, very special and special unique. Special chairs. Yeah. You'll be sitting on those chairs. Over the years, that has come. These mm. are seasons. Mm. They come. Mm. Sometimes the pressure is so much. Mm. Other times it eases. But over time, they come. But the consistency here is that servant model. We are called to serve people, and we shall remain that way. Yes. The Revival Week concept came in, pastors and in deacons board, and uh, you know, all of us thinking and praying together, we felt the need for mm. us to put up um, one time, in a year. yes, where we can just gather, and given the theme of that year, completely under the Lord, ask Him to revive us. And you know, during those times, the Lord kept would keep revealing certain things. Yes. Like revival season six, the one you've just put it, 2019 before COVID. Yes. Remember, that's when the Lord made it clear to us, the virtual church, yes. which is helping now. What we, had... <laughs> we had not seen COVID. Yes. Yes, remember. Yes. There was the issue of diaspora. Yes. You see how it is right now? Yes. Reaching out to the diaspora? Yes. Issue of um, Africa and beyond. Africa, taking Africa and beyond, yes. you know, and partnerships. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was then the Lord highlighted. There was the other one where Vision 2040. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's how come. Akina yes. Lee, Brother Lee Karori, yes. you know, and thank God for his uh, ministry. Um, with the chair of deacons, yeah, yes, Wairago, uh, among others, you know, and uh, trustees, then Peter, uh, you know, people just come in and say, The Lord is saying, and we listen, Reverend mm. Ambrose, you know, listen, mm. and we say, Yes, this vision 2040, the Lord is leading, mm. and uh, we were able to craft seven pillars mm. with uh, God, God and, and spiritual, spiritual cover as pillar number one which is our cover. Then pillar number two covers three areas. Mm. Maturity, missions, and member care. Yes. And then we had pillar number three, which was missions, missions. transformative missions. Yes. And then we had the other four pillars, each starting with an I. Yes. Investment. And resource mobilization. Yeah. And then institutional development. Institutional development, excellent uh, IME, many, excellent, excellent service, service delivery. delivery. Four, seven of them. This last decade, mm. it's like as we have grown up, the Lord has, has always shown us what to do. And the Reverend Ambrose has, has been at the center of that in terms of providing the leadership, you know, and guidance yes. for us to connect with the season, operating environment, yes. and position ourselves. And remember, Reverend Ambrose always talks, talks about positioning. Position to be blessed, mm. you need to position. position yourself. Because if you don't position yourself, you will be passed by. <laughs> yes. Somehow, Paki, as the world has, ch has changed, we over the decades we have positioned ourselves so that we are able to uh, serve that particular season right now you're talking about amending the constitution because the former constitution did not foresee the virtual church mm. the use of technology uh, online membership online membership online church membership yeah how how do you accommodate this new growth and new change unless you get a new wine skin for the new, new wine, wine. Otherwise, with the old wine skin, the new wine if you try to tear. put new wine, it's going to break mm. and it's going to pour. Mm. So we are at a place now where we need to lead to the next, into the next 10 years. And that's the next season I'm going to talk about. Yes. But you can see 2010 10, to 20, date, yes. we, we have seen a lot of growth. And uh, uh, revival weeks, the gate churches, well, strategic uh, vision 2040, among other things, under the stewardship of Reverend Ambrose. And uh, because mine was to give more of a panoramic observation and seeing how Reverend Ambrose has provided leadership in all these seasons with consistency, consistency. but also growing with the seasons. Remember, we also now had the thematic approach, theme vision. Theme vision. In 20, in, from in the 2000s. other, yes, yes, from the decade of 2000, 2010. 2020 up to date yes and faithfully and consistently listening to god yeah every writing. other august yes yes Reverend ambrose would listen to god and then and i it's not it's not easy work <laughs> i mean to write all of that until you have this product mm. that can cons be consumed by so many mm. and provide guidance and leadership so we started having the thematic every year 
there is a theme. And the revival week would actually capsulate the whole year mm. into a small space of time and then invite other yes. others to come and speak from that premise mm. into our lives. Yes. And it's just been amazing. Uh, it's just been amazing.